My name is Terry Kanakin, and I've been in drug discovery for 30 years. I currently work in GlaxoSmithKline. I started out as a chemist, but I got a PhD in pharmacology. And I'd like to comment on the drug discovery process in the context of these questions that you see on the screen. So beginning with the first question, um, and this deals or it asks about what are the challenges in pharma industry and what is the role of pharmacology? Pharmacology is unique in that it is the only science that deals with the behavior of molecules in organ systems. What you can have is a drug acting on a target, and depending on which organ that target is in, it will give a different behavior. Pharmacology takes these behaviors and is able to get at the root interaction of the molecule acting at the target to give scales of a affinity and efficacy. It is useful to think about the history of physiology and pharmacology. The important point here is that pharmacology puts physiology in chemical terms. When you think about physiology about 1880, these are some of the ideas that were out there. And basically, they were quite chaotic. They said that things happen. Pharmacologists like A.J. Clark was one of the earliest to state that physiology really is simply chemistry. This is an idea that's common to us today, but when he said it, it was quite uh, controversial. In fact, he got uh, criticized for it. Walter Straub simply said he goes too far. But pharmacology is able to bridge chemistry and biology. And it does so through the existence of scales and predictions. Very important to have scales because pharmacologists are nearly always operating in a test system. and predicting what will happen in the therapeutic one. So pharmacologists are very rarely testing directly in the therapeutic systems. They need a scale that will predict into the therapeutic system. So question two, drug discovery is based on the interactions of biologists and chemists. How are these sciences different? Chemists depend on physical scales. So they have what I call hard scales of space. These scales do not change. So they are, uh, chemists are able to see where they are in space through correspondence of their data to scales. Biologists have moving scales of EC50s. The cells are happier this week than they were last week. Chemists cannot use moving scales. So it behooves biologists to take these moving scales and turn them into the hard chemical scales that chemists are used to. And that way, Biologists can hope to turn uh, a structure activity relationship, such as you see here, and make it into a nice straight line. So biologists need to take the vagaries, variances of biology, and express them in chemical terms. 
and these scales are the scales of affinity and efficacy. Affinity, what gets the drug to the receptor and efficacy, what does it do when it gets there? And this adds an element of trust to the relationship. Pharmacology, as it expresses biology, uh, observes behavior. And it is incumbent on the biologist to answer the questions that should be answered and assure the chemist that there are questions that need no answer. For example, we have here biologist one, biologist two, and a chemist. Biologist one says your compound is a full ag agonist. Biologist two says your compound is partial agonist. And the chemist is asking, should I care? This is a question that needs really no answer. These are behaviors. These are expected behaviors. And there is nothing wrong here. One more question, such as this, your compound is a com competitive inhibitor. Your compound is a non-competitive inhibitor. Again, chemist asks, should I care? No, these are kinetic behaviors. They will change with systems, and so they need no answer. There's no problem here. Biologists should assure the chemist of the questions that need no answer and sort them out from those that do, such as your compound is an allosteric molecule, your compound is an orthosteric molecule. Chemist said, should I care? Yes, indeed. This one is very important. This uh, will predict what properties the compound will have in therapy. So it's extremely important to um, sort out which of these is true. So I'll end with comments on what is the best way forward for a team. We have chemists, biologists, and I'll give you an analogy. And let's ask the question, uh, let's consider what someone such as Leonardo da Vinci, what he is, what he does, what he is, painter, astronomer, inventor, engineer. Actually, this isn't what he is. This is what he did. What he was was a highly ingenious, energetic person who put his energies towards these uh, endeavors. Similarly, we could ask of a drug such as phenolterol. Depending on the system, can be an inhibitor, a partial agonist, and a full agonist. This again is what the compound does in different systems. What it is is a low efficacy, high affinity ligand. So it's very important that the team figure out what their compounds are, not simply what they do. So if we state that one other way, if you think about uh, the aim of a receptor team, uh, it can um, certainly run a curve in an assay and tell you what a compound does. This is just a snapshot behavior in time. But what they need to do is figure out what the compound is, because this will enable the team to predict what it will do in all systems, including the therapeutic one. So just to end, pharmacologists should be telling chemists what their compounds are, not simply what they do.